I was working for a TV company and I hadn't written a script before but I read a lot and I thought I'll try doing that and I wrote a sitcom no, I wrote, it was an, a drama wasn't it I do, do you remember that you wrote that was well it was a drama and then it was turned into a comedy it was a drama it was apparently too funny to be a drama but we made it the comedy it turned out to not be not very be funny, funny at all <laughs> and I was and he brought me in to sort of help do some rewrites on that and I think one of the lead actresses who was in it at the time, who can she be named? I don't know, probably why not? Oh, why not? I don't really care. <laughs> I don't care. It's Caroline Quentin. Uh, no, it's Dawn French. Oh, he she was on it first. first. Dawn yeah. French, so let's do both of them at the same time. Well. Um, he said, uh, after I'd come in and done a rewrite, said to Jack, never work with your brother again. <laughs> so Harry had gone through a breakup and he wrote six sort of tear stained pages. Yeah. in a sort of drunken evening and I read mm. them and I was like this is really funny I can use his misery for personal gain um, and we good. combined forces finished that script and I sent it to a TV company I worked for who didn't like it at they all they said no yes they said very much no so we sent it to a mutual friend Ben Ben Cavey who we'd known through various people who worked for Tiger Aspect um, and he's like I love it let's try and well, you know I, I you know, commission it, not commission it, but give you some money to develop, to develop it. it. So did a lot of drafts of that, and that yeah. eventually did a read through, and eventually got that. That was the first show we got made uh, yeah. ten years ago. It did terribly. It did terribly. <laughs> I really wish they hadn't made it. Really? The people who turned down the first place were right. It was they awful. Were, no, the show was the script they was good. Been it was good. made it badly. Been good. It was made badly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Romans, the first show we wrote. So the first show the first we show wrote together wrote. was Women's Empire. It was yeah. on BBC Two in 2006. And the first review, someone said, uh, this show is worse than dog shit. They did. Um, That's not all he said. He also said, Harry and Jack Williams are the sons of BAFTA winning writer Nigel Williams and they've inherited none of his talent. So... You go yeah. through that and that's your initiation to this thing. And I was like 25 when all that was happening. And it, you do take it very personally and it is quite damaging. I think with comedy especially because you're, you know, it's... People get very vitriolic when they don't like it. They really take against it and take against you and tell you you're not funny, which is not something you want to hear. Um, it was quite brutal. But reaction aside, I think the worst thing about it was that we agreed with quite a lot of the criticism. And yeah. it wasn't, hey, you know, this is no one's fault, but it wasn't made the way we would have done it. And I think, if anything, having a failure does teach you that if you're going to write something, you better see it through and make sure... There's a consistency about the vision, if that's the You learn a thing. lot more from those shows that go terribly and you go, oh, do you know what? We didn't have any communication with the director or with the actors, so that voice wasn't carried through in the whole of the crew, and that's one of the, there are lots of those little things that we sort of learn through the numerous failures. Comedy Feeds is great because you can try new things out, um, and certain shows wouldn't exist if it weren't for Comedy Feeds, I think, because you can sort of be a bit more experimental and, you know. Yeah. yeah, it's a good place to do things that you wouldn't otherwise put money into, certainly for, I mean, we, we made one in Fleabag with a comedy feed to start with. That, that's as producers, not writers, but I don't think that would have been made if it hadn't been for the chance to try it in a more experimental form. I mean, in yeah. fact, I know it wouldn't have been made. No. In fact, they said we're not going to make it unless you do it as a comedy feed. Yeah, that's, exactly. how, that's how I know they would have made it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we wrote a lot of comedy. For eight years, we did it sort of non-stop. And we wrote, had to, went to write in America for a bit and did the sort of pilot thing. And actually, we were getting to a point where we were going to have to stop kind of writing together because it was hard to sustain a life on... Yeah, we know, were broke. We were broke and there was the odd thing. And so we sort of thought, let's try something different. Um, as well as producing, we're like, let's write a drama, let's stop writing the comedy uh, and just maybe produce it. Because we watched drama, we suddenly realised yeah. at the time we were watching drama and talking about it and thought, well, why don't we do that instead of banging our head against a brick wall trying to be funny when we're not. But the very first draft, because we had come from comedy, we were quite sort of, we felt like teenagers, do you know what I mean? You feel a bit like you'd written your diary and you hand it to your agent and you're like, please don't show this to anyone if it's that embarrassing. Yeah, we went away for two weeks to France. Um, yeah and just banged out this script and sent it to only our agent, just saying, please, this might be awful. Yeah, because you never know, really. It's you, you're putting yourself out there. You're not sure whether it's good or it's not good. So that was a, a spec script, was it? Yeah, that was the first, that was the missing the first script. Yeah. And that was pretty much the script that we shot, actually. Exactly like this. Exactly like this, facing... In this position, <laughs> facing this direction. Yeah. Um, 
We do mostly, yeah. We sit and we chat all of it through, and we talk about the characters and the world and the tone and all those things. Um, and then we sort of plot it out and divide it up. Sometimes sit in the same room with headphones on, writing, and sometimes just divide up and go to our respective holes and yeah. just. The key is to get all the homework done first and know exactly where you're going and what the characters are thinking and what the scene's about. And then when you write it, you can have much more fun. Yeah. Because actually it really helps because what, what you've done is you've gone, we know where it's going to happen. So we have a final draft document with the, the, the scene heading of where you are, what what's kind of thing happens in the scene, what characters are involved. So when you come to write the scene, you're not worrying about the story because that's all in place. You're worrying about the scene and you're wondering how, how you can make the best possible scene. And it... Taking the pressure off that other stuff just makes for better scene, scene by scene as you're writing, I would say. Say scene again. Scene. <laughs> and scene. <laughs> we tried like cards and all that stuff and big boards. And I never remember to fill them in and we always lost them because we're always working it. We never know where we're going to work, really. And also you go to the card and you, before you know it, the card's got loads of tiny writing at the end because you can't fit all the ideas on. And you change like, your mind. And it's also, I find it really intimidating looking at a load of stuff on a board. We find we just have one laptop with a, fo a, a file, a final draft or a word file on it, and we and just add amount, to it and update it. The amount of stuff that would be on it, you'd walk into work and there'd be a wall full of like, oh God, you just want to go turn around. And you get episode four and it's blank, you go, oh no, but this way you yeah. just, you can sort of pretend, you can hide the problem and just talk about it and enjoy it and not with not the scale. Not like work. Yeah, not with the scale yeah. of the task ahead of you. But I don't know who else does it like that, I don't know. We do. We take once we've storylined it and you know plotted every scene. We write individual scenes. Sometimes the first half and the second half. Sometimes, you know, one person might have a particular story that they write or one particular character, uh, and then we just stick them together and pass them back and forth a few times. Yeah, and it's each other's. There's no sort of you can ch chop and change whatever you want from someone else's stuff without them getting annoyed. On the whole, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. You just can't be precious about anything, I think. No. We hand it in and they will have notes, you know, the other execs will have notes and the channel will have notes and the director will have notes. And I think and, and the, the challenge and the actors will have notes. The challenge is going, okay, well everyone's gonna have notes, but you know, let's make sure we only listen to the ones that we really agree with. Because if you went and did all of the notes it would become homogenized and it would lose its voice and its authenticity. But if you don't do any of them that's not great because you're not always right. You no. The key is, as I said, to listen to what everyone has to say and go, we really, when someone gives us a note that touches on something we know we could have worked on more, someone picks on an area of the story that we'd thought, oh, we're slightly trying to get away with it. We tend to do it because you go, you've, you've noticed something I kind of thought myself. And more often than not, it'll be the, the most important set of notes are from the director, I would say, because he's the one who actually goes out there and films it and he's the one who has to sit there in front of the actors and go, I believe in this, the way this is being done, so let's all fight for that. And if they have a, di they have a different way of looking at things as well, they're looking at it from a far more visual point of view, from a, they're trying to think where the character was in the scene before, yeah. and they're trying to think, how do I express what you've got here on the screen? And even if you don't agree with them, you have to get on the same page with the director, otherwise you can write what you want, but it's not going to be what comes out. No. I think we very much saw it episode by episode, because I guess the way the, pe you know, the, way the viewer experiences it is on a weekly basis, and rather than see it as a big puzzle that you have to chop up and confound people with we always saw it as just how do you tell this story the best possible way when you you know in the case of the first series when your child goes missing the immediate aftermath of that is interesting but we were as interested in what happens to someone's relationship after eight years and the best way to show that is to see the difference to see what it was like then and what it's like now so it's having to do it at this at the same time really because it's a constant seesaw because one kind of informs the other in the moment and so you want them to reflect each other not just to be bits of time that happen to be shoved together and in fact writing it that was the biggest challenge yeah. to try and make sure each timeline had a proper reason to be in that particular episode and couldn't sit anywhere else yeah yeah it was a nightmare yeah it no, really depends because so, there are some so that can be like four weeks and then there are some that are much quicker and just suggest themselves and neither one ends up being better or worse than the other it's all completely sort of We've got stuck on bits of plotting that have taken months, which we know we, we just can't work it out. And sometimes you can crack half an episode in a day. There is no rule for it at all. No. Yeah, well, for the Definitely. first series, we did have Jimmy in mind. And for the second series, we actually had David and Keely in mind. So it was wonderful that we got them. 
It's um, good to have a, someone in mind, so you, it's just helpful when writing it. It's helpful for someone reading it to have an idea about how it might look. Yeah. We were just lucky enough to have the people we had in mind actually say yes and do it. Yeah. The answer is, we haven't ruled it out, but it, we're not in a hurry. I think this one has gone well, and we were so worried that people wouldn't like it after the first one it went down well. And the last thing we'd want to do is rush another one out because, hey, we can do another one. Uh, it would have to be say something new and be a brand new thing and something new we wanted to say, and, and that might take a little while, probably. And maybe take some time off it, away from all of them, and do something else for a bit. But we love um, Julien Baptiste. Yeah, and we love him. I'm sure we'll see him again in some form, if we have the right idea. <laughs> exactly. That people didn't, don't know as much as maybe I thought that they did know. You know what I mean? You go in and yeah, you're sort of daunted true. by everyone. And I found it very difficult going into meetings around a table where everyone speaks loudly and very, they're very assured. You um, didn't speak in meetings. I didn't speak. I was yeah. terribly nervous. And actually, I realised that... It was great. He didn't say anything. At yeah. yeah. But then you're like, actually, all these people, they don't know any better than you. They get it wrong yeah. as much, if, no, if not more. And one mustn't be daunted by them. And a lot of, there's a lot of egos and there's a lot of alpha sort of... People can be very that. sure they're right and no one knows. No one's ever right. right. We're not right the whole time. Not, you know. not us. Not the I mean, like not a lot of the time. <laughs> But when you're writing something, you just have an instinct about what you want to do and you have to try and hold on to that and not let people get in the way of it. And you have to take notes on board and make it better and take yeah. everything you can and take all this help people offer you because all they want to do is make it better. No one's trying to ruin it. But sometimes, however well-meaning someone is, even if they're convinced they're right, they're not any more than you are. But at the end of the day, your name's on it. So you have to trust the reason you did it in the first place. Yes. My advice would be... Uh, Write, writing the, no, <laughs> <laughs> it's really fun. It would be to write a spec because that way you have ownership of it, you get to sell your vision of what the thing is and no one can get in your way and give you the notes and sort of note you and you have all the power at that moment. Uh, if you really think you want to write something and you have the idea for it, just prove that and take the time out and do that. Yeah, write a lot. That is, write a lot. Write we always spec. have, we've been writing for years, we don't stop, we wrote We've written script after script, and actually, yeah. how he's right, developing and talking about what an idea might be is, it, not only is it slightly pointless, but it's also not the fun bit. No. Because you don't get to write a scene and see how the character might yeah, talk. The spec you actually write, you don't go, yeah, this is going to be a wonderful show about zombies, and make a load of promises that you're not sure you can actually, you know, be true to. Prove why it's a wonderful show about zombies, because that's fun to do, and as Harry says, we, st we still do that ourselves. Yeah, and write this back and then send it to us. Yeah, send it to us, that's a good idea, yeah. <laughs> Actually, we've never had anything made that we've developed or that we've done from a treatment because so many people sort of fiddle with this thing before it's even a thing. They haven't even written it, so you don't know what the tone is, so it's impossible to sort of relay that in a three, four-page document. So we all, even now we write specs for new shows we want to get made. We don't take any development money. We try and look at the sorts of show that we think will people will want to be watching. I think certainly there's been this trend for the Scandi, dark, gloomy thing, and that, that won't last forever. Things will, it will come back round, but I think maybe it feels like people might be wanting something lighter sooner, you know, in the near future. Something with a bit of levity given the state of the world. Yeah, I agree. I think there's been a lot of darkness, so something lighter feels like the way forward. And I also think there's a lot of TV on and you've just got to try harder than ever to make it feel to punch through the noise different. yeah because there's so much to watch you can't possibly watch it all so how do you make it different how do you do something that okay may have been seen before but not in this form or not in this way or you just got to find ways of b being really distinct I think yeah well weirdly we sort of do compete I mean you know all the shows we've done um, or are doing have a, UK, have a US partner and they're aired there and they're up for the same, you know, Missing was up for a globe alongside Fargo, which I love as a show. So, you know, there's in, because of the way TV is, in, stuff is instantly available there to them and a UK show can be as much a US show as it is a UK one. And, and the, you know, to look at The Crown with gigantic yeah. budget and is that a UK or US show, the money's coming from America, but it feels like a very English show. So I think it's, in a way, the distinction seems to be from our perspective anyway, disappearing far more. It's, if you get a good idea, find the right person who loves it, and it might be US, might be UK, might be a combination of the two. Yeah, and in terms of, you know, the, the big budgets, you know, they have them in movies, you know, we've seen all that stuff. Telling smaller, car more characterful stories can be a good thing, and you can get more sort of, more dramatic stuff out of that sometimes than you can out of having a five million whatever budget per episode, which isn't... 
necessary. Always necessary. Three box sets. Uh, okay, got, got something funny. Like Arrested yes. Development, maybe? Maybe Friends. Yeah, Friends, come on. Come on. Old school. Which yeah. season? Well, you've got all of them. Wait, can you have all of them? Yeah. That's like 10, though. Yeah. All right, then, yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah. I like that, I can still have two others. Yeah. All right. What else is one for you, then? Uh, <laughs> I mean, The West Wing. No, that's not that long, is the it? The West Wing's good. That's, you, but you can only, I don't want the first five seasons, because any less. Yeah. They got a bit bad. The last season was good. Um, you wouldn't want last because it would be very. You'd be reminded of your situation constantly. Constantly be so depressing. And that it was going to end badly. It just made you more scared. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously dynasty. Dynasty. Let's just say that it's very important. You have dynasty <laughs> with us.